Dear students of Medicine and Elite Sciences, I am happy to reach you through this video presentation on revision of histology. I am Dr. J.P. Gunasegaran, Professor of Anatomy at Pondicherry Institute of Medical Sciences and also author, Textbook of Histology, Atlas and a Practical Guide, Elsevier Publication. The slides which you are going to see in this presentation are not new to you. You would have already seen these slides in your medical school during histology practical classes. Presentation of this type gives a quick review of all the slides with points of identification and related questions which are often asked during discussion of these slides. The whole histology is divided into 18 presentation, each of which is of 15 to 20 minutes duration. So the entire histology can be covered in five to six hours of viewing and listening. Now let's go to the presentation. This presentation deals with structure of bone. Bone is a hard and rigid scleral connective tissue. The hardness is due to deposition of inorganic salts, mainly calcium phosphate. Morphologically, there are two types of bones, namely compact and cancellous bone. Compact bone is a hard shell found on the external aspect of shaft of long bones and tables of flat bones, whereas cancellous bone is an internal framework of trabeculae separated by marrow space at the ends of long bones. Like ordinary connective tissue, bone is made of cells, fibers and ground substance. The bone cells are osteoprogenitor cells, osteoblast, osteocytes and osteoclast. The fibers are of collagen around which inorganic salts are deposited to give hardness and the ground substance is mainly made of chondroitin sulfate and dermatin sulfate. For normal growth and development, adequate intake of vitamins and minerals are essential. Similarly, balanced hormonal activities are also needed. Any disturbance in the process may lead to bone anomalies like osteoporosis, osteomalacia, osteogenesis imperfecta, Page's disease and osteitis fibrosa cystica. This is a ground section of compact bone cut crosswise. Ground section means a small piece of dry compact bone is taken and rubbed against a rough surface to make it as thin as possible and examine under microscope. It is an unstrained section. During this dry processing, soft tissues are destroyed, leaving behind the complex communicating canals and canaliculi. These empty canals and canaliculi are filled with air, which appear black to brown during microscopic examination. Compact bone is principally made of many haversian systems or the osteon. Each haversian system is a long cylindrical unit lying parallel to the long axis of bone and each haversian system has got a central canal known as the haversian canal. The boundary between the haversian systems are limited by a refractile line known as the cement line. The transverse channel connecting the two haversian system is known as Volkmann's canal. The general architecture of compact bone is better understood in a schematic picture. This is a section of shaft of the long bone 
with medullary cavity in the center lined by endosteum which is shown as dotted line and externally you have periosteum which is also shown shown as dotted line between the periosteum and endosteum is the compact bone which is principally made of three sets of bony lamellae arranged in an orderly manner of these three cells three sets the most unique and prominent system is the osteon between the osteons you have the triangular intervals are occupied by the interstitial systems or the interstitial lamellae and the interstitial lamellae or the fragments of old haversian system destroyed during growth and remodeling of the bone the third component is the circumferential system you have a inner circumferential system and an outer circumferential system the inner is deep to the endosteum the outer is out in deep to the periosteum and the circumferential system is not shown in this section this is a higher magnification of an osteon and is traversed by a central canal known as the haversian canal the haversian canal is surrounded by concentric lamellae of bone and these bony lamellae resembling like the growth rings of a trunk of a tree between the lamellae are elliptical lacunae with radiating canaliculi these lacunae and radiating canaliculi look like a spider with legs spread the lacunae and canaliculi are normally filled with osteocytes the lacuna contains the osteocytes and the canaliculi contain the cytoplasmic processes of the osteocytes the canaliculi of one lacunae communicate with the canaliculi of the neighboring and also the canaliculi communicate with the haversian system so you have a system or a network of interconnecting canals and canaliculi this is a drawing of unstrained section of compact bone and it can be identified by the presence of haversian systems or the osteon with concentric lamellae of bone the volkmann canal connecting the adjacent haversian canals the interstitial lamellae or interstitial system occupying the interval between the haversian system and elliptical lacunae with radiating canaliculi are also seen in the ground section of compact bone this is a decalcified section of compact bone in this process of decalcification all the inorganic salts are dissolved to make the bone soft and sectioned with a microtome and stained with hematoxylin and eosin so this is a stained section and the previous one is an unstained section even after decalcification the general architecture of the compact bone is preserved with all features you have the haversian systems or the osteon the interstitial systems or the interstitial lamellae the volkmann's canal connecting the haversian canals etc are seen in this section 2 This is an osteon under high power with haversian canal in the center. The haversian canal 
usually contains loose areolar connective tissue carrying neurovascular structures namely blood vessels nerves lymphatics and osteoprogenitor cells here probably these structures are washed off during processing normally the haversian canal is lined by endosteum carrying osteoprogenitor cells and osteoblast the canal is surrounded by concentric lamellae of bone between the lamellae you can see the osteocytes those lamellae which are very close to the haversian canals are the newly formed haversian canal whereas these lamellae which are at the periphery are the old lamellae this is a hnd drawing of compact bone a decalcified section which can be identified by the presence of haversian system with the haversian canal and concentric bony lamellae osteocytes between the concentric lamellae interstitial lamellae occupying the triangular interval between the haversian systems this is a spongy or cancellous bone which is made of irregular bony trabeculae separated by marrow cavity containing bone marrow these trabeculae are lined externally by endosteum containing the osteoblast and osteoclast whereas the osteocytes are embedded in the bony matrix the structural detail can be identified very clearly in a higher magnified photomicrograph here is a higher magnification of the spongy or cancellous bone and you can see the irregular bony trabeculae embed and is made up of the lamellae of bone within the bony matrix you can see the osteo sites and here is a marrow cavity containing bone marrow and the surface of the trabeculae is covered by endosteum containing the osteoblast and these osteo and also you may find osteoclast in specialized depression known as a hauschips lacunae which is a multinucleated giant cell but this is not a hauschips lacunae but you can see many active osteoblasts which are cuboidal in shape whereas the inactive osteoblasts are flat spindle shaped and you can see osteoprogenitor cells which give rise to the osteoblast and the osteoblasts are the bone formers they form the bony matrix which initially is an uncalcified matrix deep to the osteoblast during this process of bone formation some osteoblasts get trapped within the bony matrix and becomes osteocytes and osteoclast can also be seen on the surface of the bony trabeculae and they are multinucleated giant cells found in depressions known as a hauschips lacunae and since they are involved in bone resorptions and they can be seen plenty in the areas where the bone undergoing remodeling but unfortunately in this section we don't see any osteoclast mostly the osteoblasts are seen of course the osteocytes are embedded in the bony matrix this is a hnd drawing of spongy or cancellous bone which can be identified by the presence of bony trabeculae separated by marrow cavity containing bone marrow and osteoblast on the surface of the bone osteocytes embedded in the bony matrix of course spongy bone doesn't have a haversian system this is a table showing the comparison of bone cells you have osteoblast active osteoblast osteocytes and osteoclast let us see the structural details of these cells the osteoactive osteoblasts are cuboidal in shape with basophilic 
cytoplasm and they have got a large achromatic nucleus and the inactive ones are the flat spindle shaped ones and these osteoblasts produced uh, unmineralized matrix deep to it which is known as the osteoid and in this process of bone formation as i told you earlier some of the cells get trapped within the matrix and become an osteocyte osteocytes are bone maintainer and they are mature cells oval in shape with many cytoplasmic processes and these oval cells are found in elliptical lacunae and the cytoplasmic processes are seen in tiny canals known as the canaliculi these canaliculi communicate with the canaliculi of the neighboring one and similarly the cytoplasmic processes processes of the osteocytes come into contact with the processes of the neighboring cells because of this mechanism the intercellular the canaliculi communicating with the canaliculi of the neighboring one forming a network of canaliculi which is connected to the centrally placed the haversian canal as well as to the medullary cavity these osteocytes are imprisoned in the calcified matrix which doesn't allow the nutrient to pass but because of this network of canals and canaliculi and the cytoplasmic contact keep the far away osteocytes alive the osteoclasts are multinucleated giant cells and these cells are found in the surface of the bone in specialized depression known as the hauptschiff's lacunae and they have a uh, acidophilic cytoplasm the acidophilia is due to the presence of mitochondria and lysosomes in these cells these cells are involved in the bone resorptions or destruction of the bone they are phagocytic in function derived from blood monocytes and so they are part of the mononuclear phagocytic system so the osteoclast can be seen plenty in those areas which are undergoing bone remodeling especially at the fracture site this slide shows the probable viva questions which are often asked during discussion of the slide i want the students to go through these questions and find out the answers it will be of very help to you during the time of the discussion on the slides with this we come to the end of the presentation on the bone thank you for listening and watching